Ladies and gentlemen, live in this motherfucker. Devro Bjorch! <laughs> hey yo, corrupt. You first to blast, nigga. And you know how we do it on the west side, nigga. Ride. Ride on <laughs> What the? to death row, the shame will be unbreakable, unstoppable, and we will make more money than any black um, artist in the music business ever made. We will do things that no artist, black, white, Mexican has ever done. We will set our own mark and enforce it 30 times over, and we, we set about by doing that. And then we got my album, which my biggest world debuted at number one, this new album debuted at number one. That's a first Tupac for any Shakur rapper anybody. was not before his time, but one of a kind of his time and era. He was a movie star, and for him to be doing street stuff gave him like sort of a Marlon Brando edge. The outlaw who was living life in some romantic Ernest Hemingway world where you lived out your art. He had that almost uncontrollable, defiant attitude. I got a big mouth, came out, I talk from my heart, I'm real, you know what I'm saying, whatever comes, comes. But my controversy probably. And it's not my fault. I'm trying to find my way in the world. You know, I'm trying to be somebody instead of just make money off everybody. Tupac's gift was the ability to take somebody else's pain and story and translate it. We, as rappers, bought that violence. We, we bought the, the violence that we seen on the street. We put in our records. Put in our records for years. And after three, four years, people finally starting to see it because of all the statistics that's going on in the streets. If we stopped talking about it, then they wouldn't take statistics. And when they stopped taking statistics, then we'd be killing each other in the street and these white people wouldn't care no more. He would definitely give you something to think about. I know some of y'all white folks and some of y'all black folks don't appreciate what we're talking about. But this is the only way we got to make money. And if you don't let me make my money on the streets, I guarantee you, I will make my money on the streets. Shit, we only got two weeks to do this whole album. Complete it. Mix it down and everything. We don't have time or the luxury to spend all of this time doing one song. We don't have it. We got to somehow find a way that we could double up on it. Because I did my whole album. I know it ain't all of that, but I did my whole album like three songs a day. Because I was just laying it, rocking it, then getting off. You can mix it later and have niggas that love being in the studio all night, just adding a drum beat at a time and shit. You can do that after the rappers leave and shit. These niggas that love being in the studio, they just love listening for the right kick. But for while we in here and you got every, you got like eight rappers here and everybody drinking and smoking and shit, man, get that beat popping. Throw them niggas on the track. You catch everybody freestyling. Throw them niggas on the track. Boom. That's the, the name of the song. Is whatever this nigga said his word, last word was. We do it. Put it down. Then after we finish, we walk out. Everybody be here and listen to it. Be like, this the hook. We go in there and lay the hook. If we don't like that hook, the nigga lay another hook. Like, Come back out here. Kick, kick, kick him in, kick him out. Kick him in, kick him out. And that's all they talk about. And exactly what they doing. He made the level of competition, which is a good thing. Uh, he brought that level up. Any of the artists will tell you that what Tupac put into them was this, this business of the work ethic, where you can do more if you just work at it. When Tupac came, it was like, Suge wasn't worried about nobody else, not Snoop, nobody at the time. Nobody. He didn't care nothing about any of those artists at that time. He says all he needs is Tupac. He says Tupac is such a genius. And this guy is a workaholic. He didn't want no girls. He didn't want nothing. All he wanted was to go to the studio and go to work. He wanted to take his experiences 
and, and share it with the world. But your life has changed dramatically in the last three years and then particularly in these last couple, three months. No doubt. Yeah, okay? Not lying. It has been a big difference. What's it mean to you, especially these last last two, three months of your life? It is a good reward for the patients of being in a maximum security penitentiary. You know, all the times when I could have acted up or all the times when I could have went one way and I was like, I know this ain't forever. I'm going to just ride this out and I know it's going to be my time again. And now it is my time again and I appreciate Everybody that wrote me letters, telling me to be patient and wait. Everybody that, you know, helped me to see that, you know, as long as you got your faith, you know, you can ride anything. There's there's nothing too scary where I'ma just give up. You know what I mean? I've seen hell and everything after it. I think that's about it. Now I wanted to show you the ad that we we're doing for uh first one of the ads that's happening for the single. Oh yeah. I still can not home stuff. I'm trying to keep the theme of, of, of your art across the board so it all corresponds with what this is. It's tight. It's tight, right? It's tight. Nice little head. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone nods, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what else? I think that's about covered it. If you I want. I'm going to the store, man, give me another nose ring. Oh, okay. I'm naked out here. Listen, you know what? Mm. When the album comes out, you know what? When you get the chips, you know what Papa G wants. What? You gotta you take me for this, this? Yeah, no, and, first, I'm gonna I wanna, and I'm gonna get my first tattoo. I'm gonna get you a chair with the <laughs> This is ridiculous. I know, <laughs> but death row, <laughs> that's all we doing here is work. You know what okay. I'm saying? You know what? Uh,